Yo, we are here. Once again, I'm in my basement. Jeff's in Pond. Joyalicious is at home. Darnisha is at home. We're rocking and rolling. Hey, uh, so listen. Um, let me just make a couple announcements and then we're going to get started. We're going to have a cool class today. Um, well, first thing, let me let me just try to get our, our peeps in order. By the way, here, um, let's get the peeps in order for today. Um, it'd be really nice. We put up a, cu a couple of, maybe a couple of people who like to, uh, or who can uh, like to debate or whatever, but th that's not really necessary. We just need someone who, a couple, it would be really nice to have four people who just can just offer some ideas. That's all, you know, and it, it, it'd be lovely to have four people who haven't been on the stream yet just because that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's going to be nice. We're definitely going to have a, it's going to be a topic today that, that every, about which everybody has an opinion. So if we can get a couple of people, that would be cool. Um, secondly, hang on one second. I just got something I got to do real fast. There we go. All right, I'm back, man. I had to fix my audio. Um, okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, let's just look at a couple things regarding class and where we're at and what we need to do. And uh, backpacks, backpacks are due Thursday night, um, 11.59. This is the week that you do your makeups. If you go through your makeups and you, your backpacks and you're checking out, do you have 12? Do you meet the curiosity points? Remember, you have two question answer submissions and two response submissions and the question answers, you got to have curiosity score of 80. The response is 70. The Q and A's are 250 words. The responses are 150 words. If you realize you didn't meet those and you, you, you want to do them over and you can't edit them, if someone has commented on something you've posted, you cannot edit it. In that case, you just have to copy it and post another one. Um, and then add whatever it is you need to add. So keep that in mind. But you can keep track of that, y'all, right? World of Conversation, joy. We're, we are in our last couple of days, am I right? And Yes. Yes. Final Dialogues will be the 10th. Um, I know everyone's not a fan of the 8 a.m.s, but that's what we have yes. for you guys. And if you need it, take it, because there will be no other options. No other options. Well, there, we, we have other seats open besides the 8 a.m.s, by the way, right? Am I right on that? So uh, Yes, we do, but they fill up the fastest. Yeah, they do fill up the fastest. All right, well, listen, let's... Uh, so that's that. What do we... The quiz is open. Um, I made a mistake. So that means that uh, because I made a mistake, um, one question is free. So it's really, you know, best out of... 19 because one your 20th question is all yours you're gonna you can't miss it and then that's life so let's just let's just move on let's start class um if we could so um i want to talk about hey do we have anybody who's who's popping on we the way we're going to do class today 
by the way, is um, be, we just have some people watching. I'm going to talk a little bit, and then I'm going to invite you in just to make, to ask some questions. And if not, we're going to have to pull questions off the stream. But it'd be nice if we didn't have to do that. So um, again, you don't have to like to debate. It's not a debating. I don't know why I wrote that, because that's going to lead people to not want to be on the stream, because you're going to think you have to talk. You just have to like to think. You have to be willing to ask some questions. Think. That's all. I don't know. I don't know why I wrote that. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm a lunatic. Okay. So, um, yeah. All right. Jeff, you want to, um, how do we want to do this? Uh, let's go with the four peeps. Do we have anybody coming on? You know what? Here's here's what we can do. I'll just I'll just get going, and then when you want to when you want to come on, we can uh, we'll we'll make it happen. By the way, we're changing this up next semester. You're gonna get extra credit for being on the stream. So, but that's not true this semester. Hey, let's go. Let's we can go to the first slide. Um, basically, we're just, we're going we're which is simply the title. So it's a really un inspired title, the sociology of inequality, but I'm actually really inspired to to do this class. So even though it's that, that's a a totally uninspired title. Uh, but you know, whatever, it's all good. Um, so the, the, the question, one of the great questions, I think in life, one of the essential questions, um, and Jeff, you can pop that off if you haven't done it already and just roll back. I think one of the, the most important sociological questions is uh, how Will is in the house, is, is how, how and why are human beings unequal in, in their stations in life? If people have been asking this question since the beginning of time. And how and why are people unequal since the beginning of time? And, um, and you know, like the, the world is filled with resources and the, there's not enough resources to go around. And, and in order for some people to live a really good life, it means that other people have to live a life that's not so good. And uh, it's just, that's just the nature of how this is. And so we have to come up with, and hey, Will and Gus, you guys, and y'all, whoever hopped on the screen, you can put your, you can put your uh, cameras on. Um, who, we, and whoever is on top has to come up with some understanding or explanation for how and why it is that they're on top. And whoever's on the bottom has to come up with some rationale for how and why it is that they end up on the bottom. Like, how is that? Like, how do how, how are we gonna live our lives, right? Like all of us do this, right? We wanna make sense of how and why we're not really poor and we want to make sense of how and why we're not really rich and society needs people to buy in to some kind of understanding because if people don't fundamentally buy into the understanding it means that you're going to have constant unrest and nobody wants constant unrest and so everybody needs to sort of embrace some kind of ideology some kind of way of seeing the world and um and 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 seeing and understanding and ultimately accepting inequality, right? So that's what it is. And then we can have these ideologies about greater equality and lesser equality, but in the end, every ideology, and whether you know you you want to talk about like free market capitalism or state controlled socialism, every ideology is gonna say that it's have the best explanation for understanding these things but every ideology is just sort of pushing itself on into people's minds because the, the bottom line is there's always going to be greater or lesser degrees of inequality right that's what it is that and that's what we want to really understand so hang on man so what do we um 
So who, so, so it's Gus and you guys can turn your cameras on really fast, Jeff, if you want to like bring them in. Um, you can turn, turn your cameras on and turn your microphones on. I'm going to introduce you. Yeah. Yo, what's up, man? Will. Yo, what's up? Got, yeah, where are you at? Where, can you hear me? Um, I'm currently in Atlanta, Georgia, at my house. Dude, Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. How's the weather down yes, in Atlanta? Um, it's sunny today. It's like 50 degrees, 55 degrees. Dude, awesome. So it's well, not too cold. Or hot. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's really sunny and warm in State College. It's about 70 degrees here. So, I'm just yeah, joking. It, it's not, man. Okay, and guess where are you? Are you out in the valley? Hey, yeah, I'm in Penns Valley in Milheim, which is about 30 minutes east of State College. Dude, so Gus is the guy. I imagine who... we have about the same weather. <laughs> yeah, as us. Yeah, I know, man. Hey, Gus, so you're, and it, just to, to be clear, so people know, so you're a high school student who's enrolled in this class for yes. the fun of it. And you're, you, Gus is the guy whose music we were listening to uh, a couple of weeks ago before class, man. Awesome. Dude, you're an awesome musician. Yeah, thanks. All right. Yeah, and wait, and wait, and who else do we have? Because you, your name is not. Yeah, go ahead and unmute. Oh. Uh, Kira. Kira, what's up? Hey, it'd be nice if we get one somebody else on, and ideally, Marcus. All right. So we have Kira, Gus, Will, and Marcus. Marcus, you can turn your camera on, and your uh, and your microphone. I'll introduce you, and then we'll get going. Um, Marcus, what's no, up? I'm man? trying to unmute. I mean, yeah. Uh, no, you're okay, unmuted, cool. dude. You're here. Hey, okay. what's up? You're rocking. You've been on before, too. So, Kira and Marcus have been on before. All right. So, listen. So, we're going to do, I'm going to do this piece on inequality. And uh, so, keep your streams going so that you can, so you're, you know, you, you, you can watch and see the things um, that I'm going to put up. But, um, fundamentally, there, there are two ways of two issues that come together. By the way, if I could, if I could uh, say the following, if this in some ways is the most important class of the semester, I think, because I think if you really grasp on to what I'm talking and what we're going to talk about today, the sociology of sort of causality of human behavior, so for example, I think it, it really helps in framing how human beings walk through the world and how we come to understand differences. So this is like, I just feel like this is a really, really important class. So there, there's two ways. Um, so Jeff, go ahead and put that first. So you all just, just what do, what do you think about this statement, right? People have an equal chance of getting ahead if they work hard enough. What do you think about that statement? People have an equal chance of getting ahead if they work hard enough. Anybody, any one of you, man. What do you think about that? Gus, what do you think, man? Um, I think it's something that you would say if you have like, like, you, like the advantage or the advantages. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you would say that if you grew up poor and, you know, going to a bad school system with not a lot of opportunities, um, you might not say that. Um, mm -hmm. And I sort of feel like it's an excuse to, uh, to okay. understand it. All right, man. Will, how about you? I think that's definitely not true because like someone that grows up in poverty and have, may have like different issues and not have much benefits may have like is going to have a much harder time getting ahead in life than someone who grew up with the resources and also like even if you are rich some people are just born like maybe with some like a learning disability and they're obviously not going to have an easy as easy as a road as someone who doesn't uh -huh. necessarily have that uh-huh Dude, Marcus, what, what does equal chance mean for you? Um, I guess equal chance would just mean 
equal opportunity for me. I think it varies person to person in terms of what their goals are and um, uh-huh. what they seek to define as like um, getting ahead. So uh-huh. I think that depends on your own values and if you find money as getting ahead, you know. Uh-huh. But, um, yeah, I think equal chance is equal opportunity in terms of access to it. Uh huh. Okay, cool, man. Hey, so Kira, how would you have to change that statement to make it true? For, can I assume that you are? How would you have to change that statement to make it true for like Will? So people have an equal chance of getting ahead if they work hard enough. How would you have to change that to make that mm-hmm. acceptable? Like for you to be able to stand behind it and be like, okay, yeah, I buy that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I sort of agree with Marcus. It, it would have to change to like everybody needs to have the same opportunity to um, to get ahead in life. You know what I mean? Like, so it sort of reminds me of the the reading we had to do for this quiz, the reading by you and your wife uh, about deterministic versus freedom, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and how. To me, it sounds this is more like on the freedom side where it's like everybody sort of makes their own choices. And if you make the best choices or if you make the good choices or whatever, then you'll do good for yourself in life. Mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily I mean, because if people don't have access to opportunities like Native Americans or, um, you know, even like just black any, people anybody right. anybody right. if they people don't have in the valley outside of state college right if they don't have those opportunities then it's not necessarily by their choice that they can't get ahead so even if they work hard they could get the best grades in school they could do whatever and they might not like if they can't afford to go to a good college if they you know then they don't necessarily have the same opportunities. Okay, so, all right, so listen. So people, so the the issue is, so Kira says people would have to have the same opportunities. Is that is that possible? Like, does anyone think that's possible? That people would have the, the same opportunities? That everybody would have the same opportunities? Yeah, I think it's... I, Go ahead. I think it's possible, but even if it's possible, I still don't know if that would make things equal. Yeah. Okay. All right. Got it. So what would, would you, what would Gus or Marcus, what would you have to change in that statement? People have an equal chance. How would you have to change it for it to be true? What would you have to say? People have an equal chance of getting ahead if they work hard enough. Hard enough. What could you say that, that you could get behind? Um, I could probably I think, get behind. Oh, go ahead, Gus. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I think, um, if you, it doesn't work because you're talking about everybody, like the whole the whole thing. So if you're talking, if you talk about like, so like if you were to change it to people who are on equal footing or yeah. are yeah equal footing have an equal opportunity to get ahead if they work hard. I think hey, people who are on equal of, footing. Think, right. Okay. All right. That's cool. Marcus, how about you? I think I can only get behind the statement if um, s- certain resources were given to each person. So yeah. like the same exact resource, if it was like money per se, like say like a hundred thousand dollars per person, yeah. then I would say that it probably you could say that it could work. But then again, there's still different aspects, person to person that don't really um, end up in the same place, you know? Okay. So here, so here's the deal y'all, right? Like we're, we're people, we throw this, this idea out there all the time. Right. But Hey, we all have an equal chance. We can, you can get ahead. If you work hard, you know, you have an equal chance. You could do that. Right. This is like, and this is a, a, this ideology in the United States. That's really pretty hardcore, but of, but of course it's not true. Right. Because we know that there's just no chance that, that look at Barack Obama's two daughters, right. Or the kids of look at the, you know, Donald and Melania Trump's, youngest son baron or baron or whatever his name is there's just no way that any of you on the screen have an equal chance of baron trump 
to be a, a millionaire, multimillionaire, whatever the case is, right? There's just no, we know that this is absurd. And yet we say it, and we say it in a very lazy way. But there's something in there that's true, right? So what if we change it to the following? So Jeff, put up that next, the next slide. And I think you guys can see it in Zoom. Jeff's got to put it up and I think it'll pop up in Zoom. Um, um, which is this idea that, um, by the way, Jeff, which is brilliant, people can greatly increase their chances of getting ahead if they work hard. So you can increase your chances of getting ahead if you work hard. So instead of people have an equal chance of getting ahead um, if they work hard enough, but you can greatly increase your chances of getting ahead if you work hard. So that, does anyone, can everybody get behind that? Can you all like, are you all like, yeah, right, I got that. Anybody have a question about it? Like, do anyone think it's maybe not entirely true or like? So, I mean, I think that um, definitely it's more plausible than the first statement, but I do mm -hmm. think that maybe um, just life itself deals different fates and cards per person, you know? Mm -hmm. So like a lot of times I hear within like my family and like my community, like someone from like South Atlanta, cause like I live in North Georgia Mm -hmm. Like someone from South Carolina high school could do everything right, be the valedictorian, and then just still end up in the wrong place at the wrong time and possibly get okay, shot. Okay, got you, man. You know? All right, so, hey, so you and Will are both in Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> you guys got an election coming up, man. This is like yeah. a big election. <laughs> the future of humanity stands on the two. Okay, but all right, but hang on. Anybody else have a response to that? So, but that's but that's not what he's saying. What is this? Yeah, I, I would, Go ahead. I would Go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah, you can increase, like, it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, but you don't always, it's also like not everyone has the same opportunity to work hard because maybe they're preoccupied doing something else. Or like, if you've got to take care of your whole family and you don't have the same opportunity to sit around like brainstorm and come up with own businesses or throw money at like your own um, entrepreneurial stuff as you would if you didn't have to do all that, that other stuff. Yeah, but listen, okay, okay, I got it. But listen, getting ahead doesn't mean getting rich. It doesn't mean being the, the leader of the free world or the unfree world. All it means is getting ahead. All it means is getting one step further than you were yesterday if you work hard. It doesn't mean that you're going to not encounter a bunch of obstacles, right? There could be a thousand obstacles, but if you work hard as opposed to just sit around and do nothing, right, you will in all likelihood you will be able to increase your chances of getting further than you were yesterday. That That is true, right? You can all stand behind that. So, so this is actually, okay, so this is actually what, when people who take this sort of free will kind of, America's the greatest country in the world and you, anybody can be a millionaire, anybody can get ahead or whatever the case is, right? Any people who take that position that people have an equal chance of, of getting ahead or getting rich or whatever if they work hard enough, they're really saying this, if you work hard, you will increase your chances of being, of having more, being more comfortable, getting ahead, getting further, whatever the case is, overcoming obstacles, then if you're lazy, that's all people are saying. Like, that's it. No. And, like, and we're like, okay, I, we can get behind that, right? That, I don't see anything wrong with that. That is fundamentally true. That is fundamentally a deep, deep conservative idea. Work harder than you did yesterday. Whatever it means, work harder than you did yesterday. You'll be, you'll, in all likelihood, you, I mean, you're going to increase your chances of success. Everybody, any thoughts on that? Who who has who has a thought on it? Anybody? Well, I I I think that's comforting for a lot of people to believe. Dude, it's comforting for me to believe. Like, if I if I think like, yeah, all right, if I. God, I, you know, I got, for example, you know, we've been working on this live stream to just like really fine tune it, you know, make it be a good experience, right? So Jeff and Darnisha and Joy and Jamie and, you know, Bossom and Mr. Rashidi and everybody behind the scenes. And we're like, 
man, if we work hard at this, if we put the hours in, right? Jeff and I were, you know, going back and forth last night, it, you know, late at night. Like, if we put the hours in this, we're going to actually up the stream. We're going to make it better than it was last class. And it'll it'll be better next class because tomorrow we're going to make some tweaks in it, right? So it's just like, I believe in that. Makes sense, right? If I save money, I'm going to be better off than if I spend all my money. But if I work hard to learn how to invest my money wisely, um, then maybe I'll be better off if I spend all my money on really good investments. And then I'll really be better off, right? So it's even then, it's like, okay, I got it. The key is work, work hard. Yeah, yeah Sam, Sam, somebody, somebody asked, asked in, in the chat, chat um, what, what does, does on, on the YouTube, YouTube chat, chat what, what, how, how do, do we define hard work, work or working, working hard, hard to pull yourself, yourself up? up? Dude, that's an awesome question. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. How do you define it? Like for me, I just define it by every day saying like, okay, what am I going to do today? I got one day right here. I might be dead by the end of the day. I got one day. What do I want to do? What do I want to see happen in my life? What do I want? What do I define as success? Whatever that is like, okay, am I going to work toward that? Or am I going to maybe take a day off? If I take a day off, I'm going to be less likely to achieve success. You know, any, any thoughts? Can you all buy into this? Hard work is also a lot easier for Good. Say that again. I was, I was going to say like hard work, like what the definition of hard work is a lot easier for some people than it might be for other people. Okay. All right, dude. Okay. Hang on. Exactly. But hang on. Now, but now you're moving into another issue, right? So you, now you're starting to raise questions. So let's go to the next statement, right? So here's the next one, right? The rich, rich people make it impossible to get ahead because of how much control they have over the system. What do you all think about that system? Rich people make it impossible to get ahead because of how much control they have over the system, man. The rich just control stuff and make sure that things work out for them and like everybody else, like good luck. What do you think? Anybody? I, yeah, I, I agree with this one. Um, I think it's insensible that there are a few people that hoard all of the wealth in the entire world uh, and don't really leave enough for everybody else. Um, like Jeff Bezos is like, you know, obviously the richest man in the world. Um, and Bill Gates for a long time was the richest man in the world. And it's like someone did the math and said that uh, Jeff Bezos could give everybody. Uh, I wish I could remember the amount that they said, but they said Jeff Bezos could give everybody in the world like a certain amount every single month from the time Jesus was alive to now. And he would still have seven billion dollars left over. So like, maybe like a dozen eggs or something. Yeah, I got you, man. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So you would say like, yeah, I can buy into this. Somebody else. Gus, how about you, man? What do you think? I think, um, yes, sometimes. But I also think that sometimes they don't need to. Like the richest, like sometimes the system can just sort of move along in a way that is keeping the the people on the bottom on the bottom and the people on the top on the top and that they don't even have to to like help it if that uh -huh. makes sense uh-huh somebody else man will or marcus so i think that um that's definitely true um i think there's some sort of i think you could look at it a different way though because i think that definitely is true with um the rich controlling most of like what we call the system um i think that because like you know politicians often play into the hand of different corporations and businesses. So they often try to please the corporations from whatever laws or legislation that they pass, you know, that's often through super PACs and other things like that. Right. Uh -huh. But I also think that it also depends on like, I'm not entirely sure if it's like, you know, I do think it, I'm not sure it depends on like what issue it is. I do think that it doesn't make it like, you know, they don't make it easier for, just anyone to get to their status because they're kind of just trying to keep that into like a niche. And if you're in that niche, then you kind of stay in there and they, you guys kind of help each other out. Uh huh. 
But um, I do think that, um, once again, it depends on, like, what you consider, like, you know, valuable. Because, I mean, if you don't consider, like, I don't consider money that valuable, you know? Like, I think a Buddhist monk can have a more happy life than, like, Jeff Bezos, for for example, you know? It just depends on what you consider valuable in life. And if money, if that's what it is, then, then, yeah, they definitely control all of it. All right, so, Will. Yeah, what? I, Go ahead. I don't think they're sitting there saying, oh, I'm going to keep the poor down. But I think they don't make it easier. And, I mean, there's definitely a lot of, like, um, rich people that, like, do work with charity. But there's also some, like, like someone brought up how much money Jeff Bezos had. Like, if Jeff Bezos, like, took it upon himself to really, like, want to go help poor people, like, he could be he could be doing more. Than All right. His- uh- Okay. All right. So listen, man, go, go back to this statement, Jeff, like put it, put it back up for a second. Let's, let's look at this statement here, right? The rich uh, make it impossible to get ahead because of how much control they have. Dude. Okay. First off, just like the other statement, people have an equal chance of getting ahead if they work hard enough. Deconstruct this statement. It's, it, it's also not true. The rich don't make it impossible to get ahead because people get ahead. I get ahead. I, you know, tomorrow I'm going to be further ahead than I was today. Well, what do we mean by getting ahead, right? I have, I, I have money invested unless the market goes down. I might, I'm going to have a little more, bit more money tomorrow than I had today. Um, there are all sorts of things that are going that I'm going to, I'm going to do and I can do to get ahead. So like, okay, the rich may make that more difficult for me, but, but, but I'm rich. I'm part of the world's 2%. I'm part of the richest 2% in the world. Those of you on this call, especially, you know, Marcus and Will, since the two of you are, uh, Kira, are you out of state? Where are you from? No, no, I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm from uh, Palmyra. It's right next to Hershey. All right. So listen, I mean, you guys are out of state, right? So I, I'm, you're not poor, right? Your families aren't poor. Your your pro your families are probably like my family. I mean, my household, my wife and I, right? It's just the two of us. You're probably also in the top two or three percent of the at least the top five percent of the the world's population. So, like, that's pretty serious. Like, most all of us on this call are in the we're the richest people in the world because you got to include everybody, right? So therefore, it's like, well, who are we making it more difficult for people below us to get ahead by things that we do? So like I'm helping us to deconstruct this, right? Like we throw I, I'm just I threw the idea out there to see like, OK, how are we going to interpret it? How are we going to see it? And what happens is people on the right and people on the left and people who get in arguments about these kinds of issues, they're arguing over interpretation of information, interpretation of statements. And so like, hang on. So, OK, so. All right. Rich make it impossible. So well, go it, ahead. It's also people are, people are like, even if you are like what someone else sees as a head, you might not see your, you usually won't see yourself as a head because once you get one thing, then people are just going to want more. And like, okay. We're like, if you're still lower on the totem pole, you're usually more concerned with getting to the top than you are to what you're doing to the people on the bottom. Well, okay, but listen, but for you getting ahead is just being a little bit better off than you were yesterday, right? That's getting ahead. You're getting more of your schoolwork done. You're getting closer to to the end of the semester. You're getting closer to graduation every day. It's just like, yeah, let me just get a little further ahead, right? Not not get to the top. I mean, I don't really think about it. Like, I don't sit like I don't Uh sit every day and be like, yeah, I'm ahead. I kind of just like. It's just like day by day, whatever comes, happens. Okay, which is, well, okay, right. So life is like a race then, in a way, it is. So let's just define it this way, right? So you're just trying to, you want to get to the end of your life, and not a race maybe, but you want to get to the end of your life with more resources than you have right now, which means you you want to get ahead. It doesn't have to be the end of your life, or right? you want to right, next yeah, year, yeah, right. two years from now, five years from now, et cetera, right? Okay, so how about this, though? How about, Jeff, put the next statement up. So um, so what if we change this statement into the following? People born 
into economic and social privilege okay, have advantages that usually help them get ahead of other people. So people born into economic and social privilege have advantages, have advantages that usually help them get ahead. How many, can you all buy that? Gus, can you buy that? Yeah, and I think that usually when you talk about getting ahead, most of what you mean is either economic or social. Yeah, so, yeah that's right. Because there's other things other ways you could look at getting ahead that might that might not help but you rarely talk about those yeah we don't talk unless about you're that. really talking about it yeah that's right like being happy for example like who who gives a damn how much money you have if you're on if you spend your life unhappy like what's the point i'd rather be poor and unhappy than uh, poor and happy than rich and unhappy i mean this is absurd right oh my god listen to y'all and you might think like no i'd rather be rich because a lot of times you do when you're of a certain age, but when you get to my age, trust me, you'd rather be happy than anything else. Happiness is the only thing that really matters. I mean, obviously it helps to, the fact that I can afford clean water and all sorts of things, there's a basic level, but okay, it's not the only thing that matters, but it's really important. How about somebody else? Do you see any problems with this statement? Is there anything about this statement that you can't get behind? The rich make it impossible no, hang on. People born into economic and social privilege have advantages that usually help them get ahead. Anybody have a problem with that? No. Nope. I mean, it, it, of course, it kind of, of course, uh, depends on what you consider the privilege to be, you know? Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, it, it also varies between person to person in terms of like, say, like if it's race or like economic standing or if it's mm -hmm. um, disability wise, you know? Mm -hmm. I do think that like um, there are definitely people who benefit from that privilege, but people have different you know, inherent difficulties as well as inherent mm -hmm. advantages, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like I'm I'm black and I don't have the same privileges of someone who's white, but I'm also a male and I'm, I have more privileges than a woman. Mm -hmm. And in some circumstances, you being black might give you is going to give you more privilege than somebody else. Right. We can find those circumstances. But nonetheless, on average, we're, we're looking at averages here, right? And in other circumstances, being a woman would give you more privileges than being a man, right? I mean, but but again, we're, we, we, let's focus on this. So people born, anybody else have an issue with this? Kira, do you have a problem? People born into economic and social privilege have advantages that usually help them get ahead. Yeah, no, I, I agree with this statement completely. Okay, so listen. So here, then, then look at look at what we've done. We've taken these two extreme statements, right? That people, you know, have an equal chance if you just work hard. You're over here. You, if you just work hard, damn it, you, you know, you, you, you can get ahead. Like you can, you can be rich. You can do whatever you want to see in the United States. And over here, we're like, you, there's no way, man. They're the rich people, people with power. They put so many obstacles up that it's really impossible to get ahead. They just like take all the advantages for themselves, right? It's these two extreme statements. And what we've done is we've actually taken those statements and made them really make a lot of sense, which is, well, listen, I may never get rich because I'm not, you know, I'm not born into a lot of money. And there's no question that people born into a lot of money are have a much greater chance of ending up one of the owners of the world than I do because I wasn't born into a lot of money. But you know what? If I work really hard, I can be better off tomorrow than I was yesterday. So like, all right, that's cool. I got that. And I don't know, work hard. But there, and, and then on the other side is like, well, okay. And so people born into privilege, yeah, they have more things more more advantages but like they usually help them get ahead but there are other things involved also like there are things i can do right i mean there there are a lot of things there are things that can happen to me that would get me ahead so here jeff we're gonna we're not gonna do those next two slides go right to the choice and chance slide um and then i'm gonna walk you all through something here so I'm go to that slide and and then we'll we'll see where we're at um, so here's the thing, right? So when we want to understand causality, human causality, like the behavior, right? Why it is that people think the things they do and they, 
they feel the things they do and they act the ways they do. They're like, we want to, we want to know what, what's the causality and the cause is coming from two things. It's just coming from inside of them. It's choices that they make actions for, that, that really shape their lives and i.e. free choices or on the other side, it's just like outside factors and forces that they don't really control. And, um, and these could be any number of things. And the issue is, it doesn't say choice or chance because what usually happens is we we make it one or the other. We take one side or we take the other side, but it's, the two are always in play together because human beings are always making choices that affect their lives. And those choices always happen within the context of factors and forces outside of our control. Always, man. That's just the nature of it. So, Jeff, you can kick to – I don't want to show that video yet. Can you actually put – can you put that next slide up, and then we're gonna we're gonna watch this video. Um, so here you all, right? It's it's like a it's a it's a massive the one of, that starts with our choices on top. I wanna I wanna have that up. Yeah, this. So if you want to understand inequality, here are all the things that come into play with inequality. Right, our choices that we make as free individuals, right? Chance experiences. And random meetings of people, like just chance stuff, like you, I don't know, like it's, it might be chance that you just happen to run into this, prof you might take a class with some professor who says, hey, I'm looking for a TA and I need somebody. And then you start working with that professor. And before you know it, the professor's like, hey, I have a, a, a you know, this graduate assistantship. You could get your PhD in who knows, communications or engineering and like before you know it you have your phd in engineering and before you know it you meet the the king of sweden or something you know what i mean like who knows right so then wait you might if you can you might want to just keep that back up there so our our family and community like where we're born right are we born into a rich family or a poor family or somewhere in between and what's kind of community like you know gus lives out in the valley out in here outside of state college it's a really rural community right so that definitively impacts his life right our gender our race our culture our nationality our psychological disposition some of us are just like just have a really hard time living life man life is hard it's really hard it gets harder as you start to age it's just like oh shit you know what I mean? And some of us just are not psychologically in tune with what it takes to get up in the morning day after day after day and just keep doing it. You know what I mean? And it's part of their DNA or like our physical health, our shape, our size. Like some of us just have health issues. So I'm, I'm not going to gonna get ahead when I got all these health issues, right? That's not in my control, but maybe I brought them on. Maybe I've smoked my whole life. And now I'm like 55 years old and I'm dealing with all these consequences of smoking. So I made the choice to smoke and now the health issues. So our intellect, right? Some of it's innate, some of it's acquired. And or like just societal laws and practices, like the things that's going to affect down in Georgia that will affect Marcus, that won't affect Will, right? Another black man in Ohio just got shot by the police yesterday. It's like, dudes, why are you, sh what the, you know what I mean? Like, come on, man. So like all these things that happen, all right, bang, you can take that down. So, so the idea y'all, right. And then I'm going to want to hear just something on this and then we're going to watch this video. So the idea is that if we want to understand inequality, you have to account for all of these societal things. You got to account for the fact that rich people are more likely to create the laws that ensure that they stay rich and they hang on to their money and all sorts of Awesome things happen because they're going to look out for themselves and their friends and they're making the laws and they're running the show. Right. And at the same time, and you got to make out, make, you know, come to terms with the fact that, well, it doesn't matter. We're not talking about just rich people. We're talking about everybody. You're going to be better off tomorrow than you were today. You could be the poorest of the poor in the world, but you, there might be somebody behind you. And the reason that person's behind you is because you made smart decisions or maybe because you just, decided you were going to get ahead or maybe because you were born into a family that just gave you that one little tiny thing. All these things are all in play and they have to be seen always as in play. It's, it's choice and chance. It's free will. It's determinism. They're fused. They have to always be in play. But what we do is we choose one and we pick that one and we run with it all the time. We're doing that. And then we're like, 
pretending like the other things aren't in play and they are. Anybody have a thought before we watch this awesome video? I, I even, I think like everything is pretty much just random by chance. Like even free will, like free will. Cause I don't even think that exists. Dude, dude. Yeah. I got you, man. I think when I, yeah, I hear you, man. What do you think it is? You think like the whole thing could just be completely shaped by things that we don't control? Yeah, well, even the things inside you, like yeah. if you have something in your brain, like, and usually people disagree with this. I know I'd say it's like controversial, but like serial killers, like they were just like, I think they were just born that way. Or like psycho, like psycho, like psychopaths are just born that way. Like they were born without something in their brain that doesn't allow them to feel with other people that other people have that allows them to empathize. With makes them people. sociopathic or something. Yeah. Or right. you could be, I thought you were going to go like the, the pothead approach. Right. Or like, you I know, mean, when you like, like, it's like even anything, like I can't take, like nobody here can take credit. If you're not a psychopath, you can't take credit for not being born a psychopath. Yeah, that's right. Dude. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, man. Or, or yeah, exactly. If you have empathy, then, for whatever reason you have empathy, you you can't like you can try to not have empathy. It's like let me just not have it toward other people, but you can't. You're already there. And so you're like, all right, what can I do? You've been socialized. Yeah. I get that. Anybody else have a thought? Or what what other thought do you have about this mixture of things? Bind you, by the way, can I say the following? It is really difficult if not virtually impossible to hold all those things together when you're in the middle of an argument about something. Like why some why you, you run into a homeless person on the street in, in downtown Atlanta, right? And you wanna go like, how did that person get homeless? Your, your mind's gonna go to they're responsible for it or society's responsible for it. It's gonna go one direction or the other. It, as in the, the reality is it's both always in operation, always at the same time. There, it's a mix of things that we will, that are so complicated we'll never fully understand. And what happens is we grab one thing and we run with it and then we demonstrate how we're not very good thinkers because, but the truth is it's almost impossible to hold all these things together in our minds. Yeah. Well, yeah. So the one comment that I have about that, you mentioned like pot, but like, I don't think pot is a problem, but like beyond that, harder drugs and stuff, I think addiction really plays into that because a lot of people are like, oh, totally. people, people made the choice to do the drug. They became addicted. Like it's it's their fault. But so so I'm a psych major um, and addiction really is a mental illness. I mean, it is sort of like psychopathy, uh, except I don't think people are born. People obviously aren't born addicted unless their parents were addicted. But um I do think that some people have more of a predisposition to become addicted to things like like my father was an alcoholic so i have sort of a predisposition to be addicted to alcohol which is why i don't drink so you know i think that yeah let me complicate that for you right you may have a predisposition to be an addict to be addicted to alcohol but you don't know that and that predisposition may be from your father or it may be from something else. Your, your you know, genetic admixture is really complex. And it may be just a choice that you later decide as a predisposition. You might drink and decide, you know what, I really like this. And you're not actually predisposed to be an alcoholic at all. But you decide that, you know what, I really like it. And I really like it. And before you know it, you're an alcoholic and it has nothing to do with your father. And you're like, ah, oh, shit. Okay. Right. And that you know, some people, everything is really, really complicated. So it's like, but what we do is we want to try to understand the world. So we do the kind of thing that you just did, Kira, which is say, okay, I want to understand my life. My father's an alcoholic, so I'm going to be predisposed to alcoholism. So let me make these decisions over here, right in a box. Whereas the truth is, who knows? Your father's alcoholism may be his completely his choice. It has nothing to do with any predisposition. His life doesn't matter if his grandpa, his father was and your great grandfather was and so on. It's irrelevant. So it's like, ah, oh, shit. Well, how am I supposed to know how to act? What am I supposed to do? Like, who am I supposed to be? You, you know what I mean? 
Now I just complicated your life immensely. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm choosing not to drink for that reason. But oh, shit, now I actually have a choice. What am I going to do? And that become that's when life gets really, really complicated. Yeah, that's a thanks for saying that. I mean, that's really cool. Yeah. You see what I'm saying, right? You see like. Right. Well, yeah. And that was sort of my argument is that it is both. So okay. I, I, I didn't mean to switch it all from from someone makes their own choice all to oh it's it's not somebody's choice no you didn't they're... listen let me help you right you didn't but you did right. right and you did because you weren't thinking really carefully about the words that you were using so now if you and i were in an argument about this i would have taken the other side and i'd be arguing against you and that wouldn't be what you meant but it'd be what you said and so now I'm going to be like, oh, okay. Da, 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 da. And then before you know it, we're like fighting each other when we think the same thing. Right. So so that's why the, and I do this all the time as a teacher, right? I'm a, I just did it earlier when I said the thing, I don't know whatever I said about water or being rich or I don't know what I said, but I did the same thing. I just flippantly made a statement. I'm like, oh, wait, hang on. That's not true either. You know, it becomes this, it's like, ah, oh, it's so difficult to, to hold, to, always put all these things together at the same time. And so if I'm in your shoes, I'm going to say, you know what? My father appears to be an alcoholic. Um, and so that might be in his DNA. I got this guy's DNA. I'm going to be really careful about that, mm, especially my grandfather's an alcoholic. There's a lot of it in that side of the family. No, I'm, I don't could be sociological. They just like to drink, right? And but do they like to drink because it's in their DNA, their their genetics, they're, they're genetically predisposed? Or do they like to drink because they're sociologically predisposed? Shit, I don't know. But I don't I could slide into that pretty easy. I maybe I'm more likely to slide than somebody else. And because of that, I'm going to be really careful. And maybe I want to make a choice to not drink. Okay, got that. That's about the best you can do. I and mean, that's awesome. If you can do that, like, that's cool. Because what that does is that says, you know, there are factors and forces outside of my control. So everybody listen to this, right? There's factors and forces outside of my control, Kira, that it's alcoholism. It might be sociological. It might be psychological. It might be genetic. Huh, I don't really know. All I know is I have control over, I think, my decision making. And when I take that first drink of alcohol, because a couple of my friends who are alcoholics said that when I they took the first drink of alcohol, like besides spilling it on their shirt, like I just did, they were like, they, they felt like, I'm home, man. Oh my God. It's like the nectar from God just went into their system and their whole brain just got like recalibrated. They, they just walked me through how something happened in their brain in that moment. And they're like, and I'm like, whoa, that's intense. And not everybody says that, but some people do. And I'm like, yeah, if you have a higher risk of that, you may want to just like back off a little bit, but who knows? Even with that, but even with that first like decision to drink that first drink, like the way it was framed to me was originally was we can decide what to do, but that yeah. doesn't mean we decide what we decide to do. Dude, exactly. Because you might have an older brother that before you're really aware of things, your older brother is like, hey, dude, have some of this. What is it? And like, you don't even know what it is and you drink it and you have that experience that's even outside of your control. I'm like, dude, my brother tricked me and gave me alcohol. And like, suddenly here I am. Like, and I'm trying to stop, but like, I, I've got this predisposition toward this. And like, even that, it's it's ultimately it's everything is everything is in play. Everything is in play. Yeah. Anybody else? Marcus or hey, wait, why don't you guys watch this video that we're gonna show? Because I made this about eight or nine years ago. You'll see how young I am. And what I did was I took freedom and determinism and I took two sets of explanations for why my neighbor is homeless, why my neighbor lost his house. Okay. Now this, I didn't have a neighbor that lost his house, but I imagine that I did. And watch this video and watch how you take this explanation, the freedom one, you take the determinism one, and they keep going one after another, after another. And before you know it, they're overlapping one another because both are true at the same time, because everything that's said in this, that I say in this video would all be true and explain my neighbor losing his house. 
So Jeff, let's uh, let's watch that. You might have to watch it on Twitch because I don't think it's you're not going to hear the volume here. Why did my neighbor lose his house? Because property values plummeted during the recession. Because he bought a house that was too large for his budget. Five years of a down economy killed his investments. He didn't invest his money wisely. His employer cut back his hours. He didn't graduate from school. Because his unemployment benefits ran out before he bought too many job. toys. And he wasted too much. The previous owners didn't disclose problems with the house. They ended up dreaming. Because he trusted an incompetent housing inspector. And he bought the guy had to raise two children alone after his wife died. He didn't apply for jobs when he knew they had refinanced his mortgage. He acted impulsively and, and he refinanced without because he couldn't find a job that allowed he him wasn't to willing to take a job that paid less than his old one. And that's, that's why, why my neighbor lost his house. Lost his house. Dude, dude, I guess that's the most. That's just from my from my standpoint. That's the most creative thing I've ever done, right? Do you see that? It's like neighbor lost his house because like he didn't, you know, he he knew he might lose his job. He should have been looking for a job. He should have this, that, he should have saved more money. He shouldn't have bought all those toys. He should have this. Look, neighbor lost his house because the banks they pulled the rug out from under him. The banks played a trick on him because, you know, like the the you know, the the previous owner didn't disclose all these problems with the house and like Nate had spent all his money and fix it up. And one thing after is because his boss like jerked him around because his company left because da, da, da. you see like all these things back and forth and so who's responsible we're pointing fingers it's like you know will you should have done this and you should have done that and like you or like well well it's not will's fault his employer promised that he was going to hire him and so will went out and did these things and his employer just said no we're not hiring you it's like well how's that his fault this person screwed him over right well, he should have been prepared that he might have been screwed over. Like it's one, it's it's they're, it's always in play. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Go ahead, man. Who wants to say something? Yeah, I thought it was uh, really interesting though, because it just it just kind of like it really does beg the question, like you know, are the things that are happening to you your fault or like you know external things, you know? And I just think that like you know from that, like the best thing we can do is just do the best we can do you know like yeah. what we think that we can control exactly try to control it and if it fails then that means that maybe you didn't have as much control as you thought you did you know Dude. but if you don't act on something and you regret it then okay maybe in the future i'll try to act on that in the future and maybe the thing that looks like it's a really good thing turns out to be a really bad thing you like you get your ideal job and it turns out to bankrupt you, you know, like, oh my God, you never know. We never know. Yeah. But what, 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 go ahead, bro. Go ahead, Will. I was going to say, what if you took like one, you took like another step further down? Like if someone's just like, if someone's deciding sitting there, whether, whether they even want to buy the house in the first place, like what in that moment makes them say, yeah, like, does he even have control over the impulse in that moment or the thing in his brain that fired off and said, sign the paper? Dude, awesome question, man. I was in this very position just about a year ago when I was thinking about buying someplace. And uh, and I'm like, I know this is not a good idea, but I really want to. And I just kept going da, 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 back and forth. And I finally went, whoa, what am I thinking? You know what I mean? Like, what am I thinking? But another person might have been like, okay, let me sign my name to it. And I went for conservative. I'm really conservative with things because, yeah, exactly, man. Gus, do you have anything to add to that? I think it can be applied to like anything. I think that's sort of what you're saying. Um, one thing my head goes to is like crime slash um, like law enforcement. And de like, depending on where what angle you look where like sort of where on that spectrum of like it's not your choice it was, was your choice yeah. you are it's changes all of it it's like does punishing someone actually is that meaningful at all Dude, like is awesome, punishing somebody man. for something it didn't do or maybe it is meaningful or maybe you're punishing them to help to uh, protect other people from them Dude, I, I have a, 
I have a good buddy of mine who's a college professor. And the only reason he's a college professor is because he, he got busted and got thrown in prison for two years. And in prison, it was like that was the moment that he sort of went, whoa, hang on a second. What's going on here? His life, he was just stumbling along. And then like, damn. And he's brilliant. And now he's a college professor only because he got thrown in prison. Right. The thing that would lead him to be backward is the thing that actually made him go forward. So but what we know for certain is that if you're born at the bottom end, you can get ahead of where you were yesterday, but you're probably never going to get to the top. You probably are not. And just because one person does or two people do or three people do doesn't mean that everybody can because everybody can't. Because what we see is just the endless process of like, yeah, it's a struggle. Hey, Jeff, I want to go. I want to. I want to. I want to. No, man, I don't think I want to do that. Do you, can we, wait, let's just hang on. Hang on, y'all. Let me just. Um, yeah, just go to the next. Go, Jeff, go to the next slide. We're going to stay here. We're just going to stay on this. Hey, by the way, um, I I like. I, I, I like how you're, how we're going with this. Jeff, you can put that one SAT scores um, slide up. Um, I like how we're going with this. And, and, and I think I want to stay with it because, so remember this, I think I showed this earlier in the semester. Did I show this? But SAT scores by family income. And notice how the lower your family income is on average, the lower your SAT scores are going to be. Now that doesn't mean, so people who are at the, have the lowest SAT scores, i.e. have the lowest family incomes have come from the poorest families could get the highest score and the person from the wealthiest family could get the low could get really low scores so there are people who are from really wealthy families who get low scores and there are people from really poor families who get really high scores right that's true but across the board and again this is we're we're thinking like sociologists here on average if you have resources if you come from a family that has resources, those resources are going to give you certain benefits that will lead you, certain things that will lead you to make advances in life that you would not have otherwise. That's all we're saying. Doesn't mean you can't get to the top. It just means that, you know, there's a lot of people working to get to the top, man. So, like, you're going to have to probably get be luckier or work harder, or maybe you're lucky because you're like this savant, this really amazing mind, and you're like, oh my God, you you know, whatever it is. But we're we're always looking at averages. So the SAT score, that's a really good example, right? It's like, yeah, families fundamentally helps people, man. So I'm gonna look at the like the four of you, for example. And I'm going to assume like, okay, well, Gus, you're not officially in Penn State, but I'm going to assume that, you know, you come from certain, you come from certain families, you're Penn State on average, you might be from the poorest of the poor in the United States, but probably not because on average, you wouldn't be at Penn State. Any thoughts on that? See how that goes? Anybody want to kick something out or let me go to the next, go ahead, bro. Yeah, go I ahead. think... I know in my case, the only reason I even cared about what I got on the ACT or any grade for that matter is because my parents care. Like I could care less about what number is written at the top of my paper by some teacher. I mean, with all due respect to teachers. Um, but because I mean, I think the whole like judging kids by tests and grade stuff is BS to begin with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. I got you, man. I got you. Yep. Um, okay. I got you, but nonetheless, but, but here's the thing, right? But you would agree that on average, if you come from wealthier families, you're going to be, you're going to have higher scores yeah, yeah. without, without a doubt. Yeah. But, it, but, it, but you would also agree that, well, but that doesn't mean that just cause you come from a poor family doesn't mean that you couldn't work really, really, really hard and get a higher score than you would if you didn't work hard. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's absolutely true too. So you you may not be able to pay for an SAT or an ACT course that costs like a Kaplan course. So let's say it costs a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars, right? But you know you can get online 
and look some things up and like, well, but we don't have internet at home because my family is really poor. Okay, we'll go to the public library. Do it at school, stay after school, whatever. You can do something you can do to increase the chances that your score will improve. So you would all agree with that, right? Marcus? Kira? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think that um, it depends on like what you can do, of course, with the resources you have. But I do think that something will lead you in the right direction. You take some sort of step or chance to improve uh, yourself. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So Gus and Kira. So here, listen to this. So someone who's in this like kind of libertarian, um, more a true conservative perspective, it, they might get lazy and say, yeah, but no, but you can get the highest score if you really want to. It's like, no, man, no, no, no. All I know that I can, I can't get the highest. I, I probably, I can't, right? I mean, I hang on. I might be here. Hang on. Let me say it like this. I might be able to, but all I know that for sure I can do, I might get the highest score in the entire country, right? A perfect score, whatever, right? But all I know is that what I can do is if I make some choices that I think I can make or go seek people out that might know what choices I could make and, and do something tomorrow that I didn't do today, I may, I probably can I may be able to and probably can increase the chances that I'll score higher when I take the quiz. Any can everybody buy that? And see how see how see how I said that? Like in other words, I I can take responsibility, but I may not know what to do, man. Like I don't know, like Gus, like you know you 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 play you you know you you you, you what well, you What's the, what do you, you play guitar? You play do you play banjo too? Guitar and violin. Guitar and violin. It's like dude, it's like Gus gives me his violin and says, "Hey man, can you can you just just play this?" I'm like, "I don't even know how. I don't even know how to hold the bow. I don't know any I don't even know." But Gus comes along, but I got this guy Gus and he's going to show me and I'm just going like, "Oh, okay." So like, I don't even know how I could possibly prepare for the SATs or the ACTs, man. I don't know. No, nobody, I don't have anybody around me to show. I don't even know where to go, who to ask, who to whatever. So I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Okay. So, so that stand, that could stand in somebody's way. I wouldn't even be in college if I didn't have the um, tutor because I did not still, like, I didn't have any motivation to study on it by myself. The only time I would ever study was when I went with him and he would give me like these take on tests and I would just look up the back of the answers in the book and fill them out. And but why'd you them. go with the guy? Like, why'd you do that? I, they, my, like my parents made me do it. They made you do it. Right. Okay. So because they knew that I wasn't going to study at all. Okay. okay so, life. right. So you had parents who were like, nah, right. dude, you're going to do this. And so here you are, you could have had parents who were just like, yeah, man, whatever, do whatever you want. And, and maybe you, your destiny was actually to not be at Penn State and you'd be following your dream and doing whatever. But like, who knows? But here you are. Listen, I, I took the, I don't know why I signed up for the ACTs, right? But I signed up and I was, I was hung over from partying the night before. So I'm like 17, right? I had a fake ID. I'm like partying. I show up. I'm like got a headache. I don't even know what it is. I didn't know what the test was. I'm like, what the fuck? What is this? Right. I open it up. I'm reading the directions. Meanwhile, people who studied, they're like all halfway through and I'm still reading the directions. What is this thing? You know, and, and I'm like, I fill it out and I scored in the 51st percentile. So I am above average. So that's awesome. That's all I ever wanted to be in life is above average. Here, let me, Jeff, show that one last slide. Um, not, the, not the next one, the family income, the other one with the lines on it. I want to show you guys this. No, okay. Um, yeah, show the one. Yeah, this one. So take a look at this, y'all. Right. What this shows you is so this is this is you know fam, This is income by race, right? And household income by race. And notice that when the income of one group goes up, the other ones go up. And when the income of one goes down, the other ones go down. So like the problem we have right now 
is you look at Native Americans are below the line for blacks, black Americans, which is the green one at the bottom. And then you have Hispanics above that. And then you have all races, then white, not Hispanic, and then Asian. And one of the reasons, this is household income. So Asian is particularly high because greater number of Asians, um, a disproportionate number are new immigrants and new immigrants tend to live together in households, right? So we're gonna have, we have much higher household income, but nonetheless, right? Notice how at the end of the slide, like, so we say that we could say to black people and Hispanic people, well, you, you know, y'all need to make more money. That's cool. They made more money, but so have white people, right? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter what you do. Like other people are going to make more money. So it's like, so we could tell the black community or the native American community or the Latinx community, Hey, pull yourself off by your Bruce drives and work harder. Well, they're going to work harder but white people are going to work harder. And that's what these lines show you. No matter what you do, like you still see those inequalities there. You got to somehow disrupt the inequality. So it goes back to what Will was saying in the beginning of class, which is like somehow you got to give people an equal footing on the starting line. And that's a really hard thing to do, man. Yeah. Dudes, any, any, this, that's pretty cool, right? You see that? It, so it's like, Okay, but that doesn't mean that everybody who's, remember, people who are Black, Latinx, Native American, there are really wealthy people of color and really poor white people, right? So, like, you don't have to, um, yeah, let's not make that mistake. Any, any final thoughts, y'all? I feel like with that graph, like, another way you can look at that graph, um, it's like, I think it was um, uh, Hispanic or Latinx was, or maybe it was black, the, the one, the first one down from average, like yeah. all humanity. It's not that far below average. So you could say, well, what yeah. are you complaining about? You're not, you're almost at average. But yeah, you can say white that. White people are higher than average. Yeah. Yeah, you could say that. And one of the reasons is because, you know, we just have so many. Yeah, there's, yeah, it, you, anyone can make an argument and you could take the freedom and, freedom and determinism thing and we could run them together and we could just take one side or the other side and be like, oh, shit. Hey, Gus, man, do you have your guitar right there? Uh, I, I could have, um, I could have an instrument in a second. Dude, get an instrument while we're finishing up, man. You're going to play us out while we're here. All right. It could be your, your violin. doesn't matter, dude. Play something for us while we finish class. <laughs> All right, man. We're almost done. Uh, any other, any, anyone else have a thought? I mean, yeah, thinks? I, I thought it was really interesting. Just like, I think, cause like, you know, there's that whole aspect of what you were saying earlier between the um, determinism and uh, freedom, right? And I just think that like there's a, there's a lot of different variables that could happen in life, and you know I I believe in God, so like I, obviously I have different I have different views than a lot of different people in terms of what like fate is and things like that, you know. But I do think that um I think that there's a some things that you could try to change, and that um just do the best you can. And if you don't do good in the area, maybe you just move to another area, you know? Just yeah, dude. And if you try to change, you do the best you can and it might turn out bad for you. So it's like, ah, oh, okay, whatever, man. Yeah, I just <laughs> keep living life, people. So. Dude, keep living life, man. That's what I say. Shit. Gus, you ready? Are you in tune? Sure. Play us a song you wrote. Man. All right. It's a uh, fiddle tune. I found the fiddle. So right. it's awesome. Yeah, so this is a fiddle tune I wrote called Three Years of Corn. Three years of corn. As in almost three years spell but modified spelling. Yeah.
awesome, man. You got a lot of, you got a goat. Gus equals goat on the chat. Dude, three years of quarantine, someone said. You need to write that tune, right? <laughs> for next time around. All right, That's listen, man. Sequel. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for, uh, and, and Marcus and Kira, thanks for coming back on. Will, I don't think you were on before, right? Uh, this, yeah, this is my first time. Dude, thanks for coming on. Gus, thanks for coming on. Thanks for hitting us up. And uh, Lily and I are going to rock and roll with the uh, with the the quiz. And next class is the last class. And we're going to, we got a couple things planned ahead of time. And yeah, we'll hit you up, man. Looking forward to it. Um, peace, y'all. Thanks, man. Thanks, Gus. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Cool discussion. Yeah, thanks, thanks man. Peace.